Hey everyone, this is John Buck. Uh, I'm back with another array signal processing video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about null steering. The idea of if we have a beam pattern or beam former we like, except for one problem that, that we'd like to put a notch in one additional place. We have some pesky signal we're trying to get rid of, and we want to put a notch in that location. How do we change the desired beam pattern as little as possible and still get a new beam pattern that's as close as possible to the desired one, uh, but adds a notch in the place we'd like it to be. So that let's uh, switch over to the whiteboard and see how that works. Actually, before we go to the whiteboard, uh, let's let's talk about the, the sort of big picture idea in terms of beam patterns. So this is an example of a scenario like we've seen, of a scenario we've seen in class already, where we have a desired signal. This is my u-axis. I'm just showing, the sort of zooming in around broadside. This green line represents my desired signal with a minus 3 dB uh, signal strength. And over here, I have this interferer at u equals 0.09 uh, that is almost is roughly 30 dB, right? So it's, it's very loud. And just to make it clear that the problem we've seen before is uh, the, um, you know, this is the conventional beam pattern is the gray dashed line running across it, right? So as, as it spreads out and, and, and I've sort of put it right on top of the signal so we can get the relative difference. We can see that the, uh, that even if I knock this down Right, this is how much I'll be attenuating the interferer. It isn't enough to bring it down below the desired signal, that I would be overwhelmed. So one solution we saw last week is I could apply an array shading, but that has the cost of making my main lobe wider, costing me some white noise gain, uh, as, as we also saw. And so the question is, well, what if rather than trying to push the side lobes down everywhere and suffering with that much twice as wide, doubly wide main lobe, Right, or, or main, main uh, beam width, we're doubling the null to null beam width to get the side lobes down everywhere. I don't need them down everywhere sometimes. Sometimes I know where this thing is. The, the, the sub J subscript that Van Trees uses is because historically this might have been called a jammer. And if I know exactly where it is ahead of time, I can put a notch just there and I don't have to make my main beam or, or increase my null to null beam width by as much. And so my goal in doing that is to end up with a new beam pattern, like I'm showing in this figure, where the blue dashed line indicates that when I've added a notch, this is the blue one, the blue beam pattern we can see is essentially the same null to null beam width. So I've, I've put the notch in this one place just to get rid of this one pesky interferer <clears throat> and made as little change as, as possible to the rest of the beam pattern. Uh, and if, if I expanded the window, we'd see it's, it's I'm not hiding anything under the rug here. It actually only gets, the blue and gray lines only get closer as I move further and further out. Uh, so by adding this one extra notch here, I've sort of shifted this one notch over to get better nulling performance. And, and so that's the goal of no, notch steering. When I have a fixed notch in a known location, how do I modify my beam pattern just a little bit to make that extra notch be where I wanted? Right? We saw in some of the class problems earlier, we talked about what would happen if you got lucky and the interferer was on top of the notch of the CBF. It would just go away, and that was great already. We say, well, what if I don't have that much luck? You know, most of the time, the things are not going to be right in the notch for me ahead of time. How can I add one more notch to my beam pattern to put a notch on top of, of the interferer? So that's the conceptual idea of what the result looks like in the beam pattern as I go from the gray to the blue. Let's see how it plays out mathematically. Okay, so again, the idea of null steering is that I have some B sub D where D is for desired. So B sub D of psi I'm going to use today uh, because psi is the, the spatial variable where I'm least likely to make a dumb algebra mistake in this derivation. Uh, so B sub D of psi is the desired beam pattern. Again, uh, for the case where you know, our definition from Van Trees, psi is minus K sub D of K sub Z of times D. So this is the normalized wave number. Right? And for the derivation today, I'm going to assume, in fact, that we'll assume that we've got a standard array. So I'll assume d is lambda by 2 for all the work today. So I'm, I'm meeting the Nyquist theorem. And so when I do this, thinking about our analogy, remember psi is like discrete time radian frequency. So this is like a capital omega in discrete time. It's the spatial analog of that. And so we've got this beam pattern with some set of array weights w sub d. And my goal is to find a new beam pattern, W, a new beam former W, with its own beam pattern so that B of psi is as close as possible to B sub D of psi, 
So I'm as close as possible to that original desired thing with one tweak. And I have this constraint that b of psi sub j equals zero for some jamming direction, psi sub j, which has this manifold vector, we'll call it v sub j, right? So again, this is the, the manifold vector for the jammer. And this J is, is J for jammer. Okay, so what that means, if, if we think about it, we say, well, what is the beam pattern in general? The beam pattern is the array weight inner product with the replica vector in each direction or the manifold vector in each direction. So we're adding a constraint saying the beam pattern is zero is saying I want the inner product of my new weight vector and the manifold vector for the jammer to be zero. That's what gives me the notch, like I showed you in the figure a second ago. So let's see how to set this up. All right, we say, well, I, I want to define, an, if I want to say, to make B as close as possible to the original desired beam pattern, let's define an error, we'll call E, or epsilon, will be the error, which is the integral over the whole, from minus pi to pi, assuming, again, that we've met the Nyquist theorem, I'm going to look at the error between the desired beam pattern and the one we got. So we're try this is the new one we're trying to find. I want to design it to minimize this error. So this is a mean squared error, right? I'm looking at the sum of the squares of the difference between the two beam patterns, magnitude squared, integrated over the range that psi covers from minus pi to pi, normalized by the width of that range, that interval. And now because we know the beam patterns are Fourier transforms of the array weights, or like the Fourier transform with a conjugate of the array weight, we know that if I'm minimizing this error, well, first of all, we can say that, that the Fourier transform relationship tells us that if I take the difference of two beam patterns, that's the equivalent in the spatial domain of taking the difference of the two array weights. So it's saying in some mean squared error sense, minimizing this error between the squared error between the beam patterns is also minimizing the squared error between the original desired weights and the ones we just found. So using Parseval's theorem, right, we say, well, the sum of squares in the frequency domain, the, the total sum of squares in the frequency domain is the same in the spatial domain, right? So I can say using Parseval's theorem, that's important enough, I should write it down. So Parseval's tells us that we can also write E as the sum over the whole array of the difference between my new and my original vector magnitude squared, right? Take the complex, subtract them element by element, take magnitude squared of those complex numbers and add them up over the array, which is in long-winded way, the same way to say I want the norm squared of the difference between these two vectors, right? If I think about linear algebra terms, this is the difference between the two vectors, magnitude squared. So if we want, what we have now is we say, I want to minimize this error subject to a constraint, right? So now if, if I come back to my original goal in these linear algebra terms, I want to find, to be clear what I'm given first, I want to say given my desired weight vector and the jamming manifold vector, I'm going to find W, my goal is to find W to minimize this error with a constraint that the new weight vector W Hermitian needs to be orthogonal to V sub J, which is to say I need to have, right, this, this is, say, well, what I really want is the beam pattern to be zero, which says this mathematically, which implies that the new weight vector is perpendicular to the jamming direction. Right, so how do I find the, the vector that, that is orthogonal to the jamming direction and minimizes its difference? 
Well, there's two approaches. I'm going to pause the video here and let you think for a minute. What's this? And like many things in this class, there is the straightforward, grind it out, and then there's the smart and lazy approach. So think about which one you would you would pursue and how you would do that. And I'll pick that up in the next video.